Hi guys, welcome to Techie DIY. I'm Nigel and in this series of videos, I'm going to look at the Keys Arduino RFID System Learning Kit. Now, if you're not familiar with RFID, it stands for Radio Frequency Identification and it's commonly used in door entry security systems, payment cards, bank cards, rail travel cards, and even pet identification chips. Arduino refers to a microcontroller board that is easy to program, connect to other devices, and you can use to create your own projects. So in this first video, I'm going to run through the contents of the kit and in subsequent videos, I'll look at each of the devices and how to use them. So first of all, let's look at the microcontroller board. It's labeled in the kit contents as an Uno R3 control board. Basically, it's a Chinese copy of the Arduino Uno made in Italy, the design of which is open source. The board itself is well made. It has an 80 mega 328p microcontroller and the Atmel 16U2 USB to serial chip, a 16 megahertz clock crystal. Power can be supplied via the USB connection from the DC power socket or directly via a V-in pin connection. There are 14 digital input output connections, six of which can be pulse width modulated and six analog inputs. There are also power output connections for 5 volts, 3.3 volts and ground. It has a reset switch and three LEDs. The transmit and receive LEDs are connected to the USB to serial chip so that you can see when the board is communicating via USB. The third LED is connected to the pin 13 digital output and it can be set to high to turn the LED on and low to turn it off. It is easy to connect external devices to the board using I squared C or SPI, which we'll look at later. Connections are easy to make to the board using the connectors and jump wires are supplied with a kit. To make a connection, simply push them into the appropriate connector. The wires come in a variety of sizes with both male and female ends, so you can attach them to a variety of devices. To connect the board to a PC, we use the included USB cable and programming then takes place using the Arduino IDE software, which I'll cover fully in the next video. Next, we have a breadboard. These are used to prototype electronic circuits and they're very useful for experimenting with the Arduino. The board is divided into two independent sections, upper and lower. Each section has a pair of power rails and 63 columns of five connected rows. As an example, if I want to connect a seven segment LED device like this one, I'd place it across the center and then plug the wires into the top and bottom. Moving on to the next item in the kit, this is a standard 16x2 LCD character display. It can display two lines of 16 characters. This one has an I2C backpack, which makes it very simple to connect to the Arduino using the I2C interface. The jumper on the back enables the screen backlight and the blue potentiometer varies the screen contrast. Each device connected to I2C needs an individual address and you can change the address for this board using the six solder pads. This is an RFID RC522 module, which can read and write MyFair RFID tags. These operate at 13.56 MHz and two are included in the kit. The module has an NXP RC522 chip, an onboard antenna, and it can read tags from about three centimeters away. The chip operates on 3.3 volts, so this is something to be aware of when you're connecting to it. The connection to the Arduino is via the SPI interface, and once again, I'll show you how this is done in a later video. This module is a relay board. You can connect it to an Arduino digital output pin and then switch the relay by setting the output high or low. The Arduino digital outputs can only drive small loads, so this relay board allows you to control higher power devices like motors or solenoids. An example of this is where you want to unlock a door as part of a security access system. The relay has screw connections for the normally open and normally closed contacts. And finally, the relay is marked as being able to handle 10 amps at 250 volts AC or 10 amps at 28 volts DC. This blue device is a server motor, the sort you find in radio control models. It's labelled as a Tau Pro Microserver 99 SG90. A server motor is a rotary actuator. Servos are very simple to connect to the Arduino, just three wires, five volts, ground and a signal wire. You can set its position with a pulse width modulated or PWM signal on the signal wire and the length of the pulse sets the position between 0 and 180 degrees. It comes with three different arms. In the context of this kit, you could use the servo to physically operate a lock in an access control system. The kit also includes a stepper motor and driver module. A stepper motor is a 28BYJ-48 and it operates on 5 volts DC. The driver board uses the ULN 2003 Darlington array. The advantage of a stepper motor over a normal motor is that a stepper motor can move in fixed increments called steps. 
This one can move in steps of 5.625 degrees. The stepper motor simply plugs into the driver module and then four control lines are connected to the module from the Arduino. The power requirements for the stepper motor might exceed the capabilities of the Arduino 5V output, in which case a separate external supply should be used. So looking at the rest of the kit, this is an infrared remote control which sends coded pulses representing which keys are pressed. This device is a VS1838B infrared receiver. It has three pins, one connects to 5 volts, one to ground and the other to a digital input. The Arduino can decode the signal to determine which keys on the remote control have been pressed. This is a sound sensor. It has a microphone element and an analog and digital output. The digital output can be connected to an Arduino digital input for simple on-off sound triggering. To measure sound level, the analog output is connected to the Arduino analog input. The sensitivity of the module is set by the blue potentiometer. This is a water sensor. It has three connections, 5 volts, ground and analog output that varies with the amount of water contact. Here we have a DHT11 digital temperature and humidity sensor. The connections are 5 volts, ground and digital output. The digital output requires a pull-up resistor when connected to the Arduino digital input. It can measure 0 to 50 degrees centigrade and 20 to 90% relative humidity. This is a DS1302 real-time clock module. It keeps track of the date and time. It has a simple synchronous serial output. These are tilt switches. They contain a metal ball which shorts the contacts when the switch is tilted. Then we have a 4x4 matrix keypad. Four of the pins connect to the rows and four of the pins connect to the columns. These are light dependent resistors. The resistance of the device drops in strong light. You can use these to form a potential divider and measure the output with an Arduino analog input. This flame sensor is a silicon NPN phototransistor which detects infrared light with its peak sensitivity at 940 nanometers. This device is an LM35 temperature sensor. Its output is proportional to the temperature in centigrade and we can measure it by connecting its output to the analog input on an Arduino. Then we have a pack of LEDs, five each of blue, red and yellow. Two seven segment LED displays, a four digit and a single digit. The part numbers are SMA420564 and SMA420056. Both are common cathode devices. There is also an 8x8 LED dot matrix display, a joystick module which contains two potentiometers to measure the position and also a push switch. The connections are labelled ground, plus 5 volts, VRX, VRY and switch. There's a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer which can be used as a potential divider and connected to an Arduino analog input. Two types of buzzer, passive and active. Passive buzzer has the visible PCB. The active buzzer only needs power to operate, whereas the passive buzzer needs to be driven by the Arduino with a modulated signal. This is a 748C595N shift register. We can use this to drive some of the LED displays in the kit with a reduced number of connections to the Arduino. There is a set of four push buttons with yellow caps. And there are also some resistors with values of 1K, 10K and 220 ohms. Finally, last but not least, we have an RGB LED module. It's a common cathode device. If you connect it to three pulse width modulated outputs on the Arduino, you can make it produce any color that you like by varying the level of red, green and blue. So that's what you get in the kit. Lots of modules and components to experiment with and build into your projects. The kit was supplied to me free of charge by Gearbest.com and I've included links to the product in the description. Gearbest do have an interesting range of electronics, robotics, CNC and laser kits. So you might find that interesting. You can also click on the eye symbol in the top right hand corner of your screen and access a card with a link to the kit information on my website. In the next video in this series, I'll be looking at installing the Arduino IDE software and after that, how to use each of the modules. So thanks for watching the video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again and see you again next time.